For current source amplifier, if you have a current um, source load, then you get the your output resistance is the a self output resistance from the M1. So the overall gain would be so for the input variation V in, then current will flow through here more. If you raise the voltage on the gate, the current will increase on the drain and source. The ID will increase, that current will flow, only can flow through there. The voltage drop will happen here, so V out equal minus GM times RO as shown here. So if you consider the output resistance of the PMOS, the current source here, the ROP here, so that current source the input gate voltage is fixed at DC so there is no variation so input voltage will be tied to zero the source node is also VDD so that is also AC ground so no variation on the G in the v, VSG of the M2 no variation so that means this current will be zero so we are only seeing the R02 at the load. So we will see that R1 in parallel with the M1 that lead us the R1 and R02 in parallel output resistance and gain is GM1 times like this uh, R1 parallel uh, with the R02. This is just typical gain um, analysis for example if you now in turn now if you draw your circuit you apply the input on the PMOS device and also the you apply the bias voltage on the gate through the now the input signal is they apply to uh, PMOS input the so bias voltage in zero no variation in that case how you get the gain so in that case VSG actually modulate the current through the PMOS that is ID this ID will flow through ROP and RON in parallel so since this MOS gate voltage is at DC so there's no current you know there's no AC current I mean the small signal current flow here that is zero so the ID here is GM times what if you have if you raise the VSG so VSG then you get more pull down current from source to drain so we can draw like that a uh, current so that means the V out equal to uh, ID times ROP in parallel with RON right so that ID is what now the GM times what uh, VSG is uh, 0 minus V in right? that give us RON so minus GM ROP parallel with RON so it is the same thing whether you have take it take the input through the PMOS or MMOS so the small signal analysis from the small signal analysis AV is the same Okay. In that case, the GM is let's say GM two and two and two, right? So if this is the GM two and M one, then you can specify it like that. We can compare the swing range between the resistive load and the current source load. For resistive load, the maximum output voltage it can go to ensure the M1 in saturation is the VDD. It can go up to VDD, 
the lowest voltage is around the v input bias voltage minus VTH1. There's a zero. There's a certain uh, voltage that is not allowed uh, because the, in the if this up voltage go below that limit, then M1 will go into trial division. For the current source load, but the, the maximum voltage is also limited by this device. If, if that PMOS is in the saturation, then VSD must be greater than VSD set. That is what? Uh, the overdrive voltage of that, the, the M2. Right? So that overdrive voltage, that would be so that the maximum voltage is the VDD minus overdrive voltage of the PMOS that is the maximum so the minimum voltage is the overdrive voltage of VSD must be greater than um, v, in this case VDS VDS must be greater than VDS set that is what uh, overdrive voltage of the M1 so, so the maximum and minimum is limited by uh, minor, the, each device is overdrive voltage. So designing overdrive voltage for each device is critical for ensuring, I mean, when you have a pretty well calculated output range and such kind of thing is well bef well studied before you actually design. From this equi from this requirement, we will get the finite uh, size of the device, so W1 over L, right? W2 over L2. Such kind of a design vari variable can be uh, determined, right? For the given given I. Why? Because we know that I is given by half mu n C w C O X W of L V overdrive square, right? Well, for the given I, if you design the overdrive voltage, you will get the W of L, right? So W over L is kind of the results from the given overdrive voltage. Uh, for the, the desired overdrive voltage is decided and the current level is also decided then that results in the finite uh, size of the device. So designing circuit is not just only finding appropriate size of the device, those finding device uh, coming from determining current and the current the current will set the overdrive voltage that will result in the finite uh, some device size so you have to always watch out for the current level and overdrive voltage and the size not in so all these three all these are checked in the design process but the people or the students only check this device size that's it they are not looking at the overdrive voltage and current level without monitoring those you cannot get the correct circuit okay you have to monitor always double check the current overdrive voltage and the size right that results in those two results in the size now if we uh, apply our signal variation both PMOS and MMOS like this then we will get the higher gain in the undergraduate course we had learned that this basic structure is inverter symbolized we make made a symbol as like this inverting logic if the input digital is 0 1 digital then the output will go 1 0 like this what if we apply the small variation there with the proper bias then we will get the amplifier the output signal why so if you go back to transfer function from v out versus v in starting from zero 
the alpha voltage we know that as we increase the input voltage then alpha voltage go down like this we will see a very sharp transition at the middle around half VDD in that region we can apply the small variation on the input then we will get the larger swing variation through this curve so if we bias the input at the half VDD then we can maximize the gain in that case the current through the device will be higher so IDS is higher in that so assuming V in is a bias assume V in is bias V in is bias with what have VDD then the, we can find the, G, the, the GM so for PMOS and MMOS let's say mobility ratio we know that mu n and mu p is approximately 2 so we make if that is the case we make the device size uh, w and 2 w for PMOS we apply the half VDD so we will find the proper op device operating point and then find the small signal variable we will extract from that so ha apply half VDD we are placing our device on the, this operating region and on top of that we will apply the small signal variation here so at BIOS, we know that the VSG or the PMOS device will be VT plus overdrive voltage. For the MMOS, we will also same the overdrive voltage VGS now equal to VTH plus V overdrive voltage. If we assume that VTH P and N is equal to VTH, the same threshold voltage for PMOS and MMOS. And then we size that the 2x larger device size by the mobility ratio to mu times w. Then we know that the overdrive voltage of the PMOS and MMOS will be same. Why? Because the we are sharing the same current I. We know that half mu n half mu C O X. Uh, w over L uh, V overdrive voltage, right? We know this uh, equation. So if the M, since the MMOS is 2x larger uh, mobility, if we size that the PMOS are 2x larger, then we will get the same current with the same overdrive voltage. From that equation, we can conclude that. So if that is the case, So for the given VDD voltage and half uh, the half uh, the half VDD at the input bias will give us the maximum gain. So GM is what transconductance. So we can extract that from phi over v overdrive. So we know that GMP equal to GMN is the same. Why? Because we are sharing the current and the same overdrive by uh, WP equal uh, 2x W and WN is 2x uh, just N and W because that one mu, we assume that mu P um, mu N over mu P equal to 2 so we properly size the device size with the, the mobility ratio then the GM of the PMOS and MMOS will be the same In that case, AV equal minus GM. So we will equate more in detail through the small signal analysis in the next slide. So we draw this small signal analysis, uh, small signal equivalent circuit shown in here. 
we know that v in variation will be uh, will set the vg as a variation here so v in times uh, the gm1 give us the the current through the mmos like the, in this direction for the pmos i prefer to use v as the g notation in direction because that way we know that if we have a v um, v, not the VG, VSG notation so that if VSG get larger we know that more current flows through the the PMOS so in that convention so V in V so this one is the AC VDD is AC ground so this one is V so we want to uh, specify the V as the g becomes minus v in right so minus v in between here plus minus we get the minus v in and the current will flow in that direct different direction here gm2 times minus v in here so the output current i out so i out will be what the by KC, kcl i out is equal to minus gm v1 um, minus and plus so we get the this current going into so this current going into the load so that one is so this one is what gm2 times minus v in so finally a v so the i out is i out is minus gm1 plus gm2 v in so finally v out equal to i out times r one in parallel with r2 that give us a gm1 plus gm2 times R1 parallel R2 times V in so this is gonna be AV we'll see so you can draw a small signal analysis shown here but you can without even drawing this small signal analysis you can do the analysis directly through this uh, device schematic we know that this is gm is the gm v in that current will be gm 2 minus v in right so this current and that current will flow through the output load impedance rop in parallel ron right so by looking at this uh, circuit that you can directly calculate this uh, equation and then get the AV. One thing that is important thing is that having PMOS on the top improve the GM. So previous MMOS only or PMOS only amplifier has the one GM, but now by having modulating gate voltage on both uh, PMOS and MMOS, we get the larger GM, right? Almost if you assume that GM1 is GM2 is approximately same by having size of the MW2 equal to mu times uh, mobility ratio times the W1 meaning mu n over mu p times W1 then the GM is similar we get the 2x minus 2x GM ROP parallel RON. So what will get the twix larger gain out of this uh, configuration? This is the one technique that you can get the large gain. But the problem with is that the, if there is any supply noise fluctuation there, that one will modulate the VSG that will result in the current variation through the M2 that kind of thing is the causing the supply noise on the output 
So this kind of circuit is very sensitive to the supply noise. So and the supply noise is also the amplified. So this is very so there is just some caution when you design when you use this kind of a circuit you must be there must be a way to uh, stabilize the output voltage variation. So most of the time so for this kind of amplifier circuit so we do not connect the switching digital block onto the the, the supply because every digital logic or inverter or whatever the end gain nor gain whenever it make it changes its state that there are just uh, the current spike current will flow every time it make a changes from so whenever we charge the output there's a spike current will flow whenever we charge up so there need there need to be large current i supply will be required such large current will uh, flow through the supply network uh, resistance that will cry create the voltage drop that is shared with the, your amplifier then your output amplifier will see the glitch right so this is something that you don't want to happen so this kind of a digital circuit i mean the, the static digital is okay but whenever the input input digital value changes then we don't want that connected to the analog supply amplifier uh, supply Okay, so we need to isolate, need to isolate, uh, need, need to not share, need not share the analog and digital supply, or digital or supply. Okay. For common source amplifier uh, stage load, we can also use the the transistor uh, resistance out of the triode state. So M two shown here will drive the the VB gate bias voltage low enough so that the uh, M2 is always in the triode region. So you know that the to make sure that M2 is in the triode region, so the output voltage must be there's just some relationship uh, between V out and VB. So V out must be greater than VB with the, some um, offset like uh, what is the offset that it would be the threshold voltage of the PMOS so if the V out is greater than V B plus V T C P then it would be in the triode region so the to make sure that wide operating range V B might be designed to be low voltage right in that case, the on resistance can be determined by this kind of a relate, um, the equation. As you can see, uh, if you design the regi load register with the transistor, it has uh, some process uh, dependent parameter like a COX in here and VTH here and bias voltage as well. So all these kind of things and mobility and all these uh, sensitive to mobility is also sensitive to the temperature, right? So all these process variation we call like the PVT variation, process, voltage and temperature. So P says and voltage. All these variation will impact will have impact on the triode register value. 
So mostly we prefer not prefer not using this kind of uh, technique. So it is just not mostly not used by itself. Only it is used with the negative uh, feedback control. So so for example, if you want to make sure the resistance value is a certain value, then we make a feedback circuit. Uh, to make sure the voltage, for example, voltage drop over the transistor. So this is how we generate the VB generation. The amplifier will find the voltage to make sure this voltage, uh, output voltage is, we know that if that is our on is there the flow the current i then this voltage will be vdd minus i r on to so make sure this voltage Voltage is the reference voltage. So if this ref, if, if we drive the current level, drive the current level so that the this negative feedback drive the those two voltage difference will be zero. So so that the the generation of a VB is automatically found by the negative feedback. So you can double check whether this is the negative or positive feedback. So if the voltage, let's say, goes up, and then the the amplifier output will goes up by this positive sign on there. If that goes up, this is common source amplifier gate drain. So goes up and go down. So this up uh, transient will up transient will be forced by the negative feedback uh, down direction. Right, the negative feedback will drive this variation uh, to be small. Okay. So this kind of uh, some reference generation with the, some feedback circuit is required okay in this common source amplifier so we add some register in the source node in that case the gain changes. Let's find the gain of this amplifier's configuration. So, so if the V in changes, there's a change in ID current, right? So that will flow through the RS. That will set up the voltage of uh, the ID times RS. And if there, since there is ID current flow between drain and source. The voltage drop across the gate and source must be ID over uh, GM. Since we draw that, we assume that ID current flow through that RD, the final output V out will be minus ID times RD. And the relationship between input from this loop we will see the kvl so by kvl we can drive that v in minus id over gm plus a minus another id times rs that will be uh, equal to Uh, starting from that we'll go to zero right so therefore the ID 
equal to uh, for in one RS plus one over GM one so one equation one and two we'll, we'll, we'll use that plugging two into two into one we get the V out what minus R D times R S plus one over G M. So final we will get minus G M over one plus G M R S times R D. So this is the the final equation of the source degeneration. So out of if you look at closely the without rs for rs rs equal to zero we get the av times v in over v in this is av so with rs equal to zero we know the minus gain is voltage gain is gm times rd uh, R and for rs is not equal to zero then like this right you can see that gm without rs the gm is represented like this somehow the gm is small let's say if the gm is so large large number then av approach to what rd over rs the gain of this amplifier is getting close to the ratio between resistor and resistor on the load and the source resistance. Okay. There is some simple trick to find the voltage gain for this kind of uh, source degenerated uh, amplifier structure so looking at the input resistance from this bottom side that will give us what so if you look at from the bottom series RS plus we will see the 1 over GM through this transistor because the gate is tied to AC ground and source node is always uh, the, the low impedance so that would be 1 over GM so overall series resistance is like uh, RS plus 1 over GM so overall voltage gain is the ratio between this uh, source side uh, impedance resistance and the load resistance so RD over 1, 1 over GM plus RS that would be your, the voltage gain Again, if the GM is large enough, then this gain approach to a uh, resistor ratio. If a GM is large, okay. We'll review some large signal behavior out of a common source uh, stage with the degeneration. So if we if we assume that the common source amplifier without the degeneration, then at bias as at bias, there will be their current will flow large signal current ID that will set up the VTH plus V overdrive on the between gate and source node so for example if your operating point is here here is id current and then this node voltage will be what this is the vth so this is v overdrive voltage right so this is vgs the vgs becomes vth plus overdrive voltage with the degeneration uh, so if you increase the v if you increase the v in the curtain will getting larger and larger so gm transconductance will go up and up 
So, so if you remember, for the given size, the GM will be represented by what? GM equal to mu c o mu and c o x w over l free overdrive. As you increase overdrive voltage, the current will go up by scale. Uh, scale so uh, proportional to overdrive scale because that is a scale low device. But the GM is but the GM is growing linearly by this equation. For degeneration, if you put a resistor in series like on the source node like this, at bias current flow ID and voltage drop will set up uh, ID times RS. So input voltage will be what? VTH between gate and source there will be VTH plus overdrive voltage there. So at bias point in Q that will have what? So input voltage will be this this voltage will be uh, overdrive voltage plus ID times RS. So operating point at bias condition, we have a larger uh, the distance between th between threshold voltage and operating point. In the previous case, our signal will move up and down. For example, for sinusoid input, on the input can only go up and go down by overdrive voltage. The limited input range, the limited input range, input range by overdrive. But with the degeneration, we are seeing more input range by the ID times RS. So by degeneration, we get the more larger uh, input range input signal range that lead us a better linearity and the the GM uh, equivalent transconductance out of this stage we call it big GM that would be GM over 1 plus GM RS that is uh, reduced by uh, 1 plus GM RS, right? So if the input goes up, then overall input goes up, then current will increase uh, through this uh, device, but the GM itself will be limited what to what? So 1 over RS if our, our GM is large go up so this GM will eventually saturate to 1 over RS so this kind of a degeneration stage give us a larger input range so that better linearity on the input side at the expense at the expense a larger gain Right. What is it cost for that? This is at the expense of of what? Lower voltage gain, AV. So AV is what? So AV, you know that if you put a load resistor there, we get the uh, lower gain like AV with a big GM times RD. F root, F, that would give us the minus, uh, that would give us a GM over 1 plus GM RS times RD, right? So this is what, uh, the, the, the implica implications behind the using the source degeneration, okay? In this circuit, we will 
find the output impedance looking down to the drain of the M1. If you use your source degeneration, you will boost output impedance. So we will show that. So for the ideal, non-ideal M1, there is finite R out register there. If the R out is infinity, then R O is infinity, then R out will be also infinity. But R O is not infinity usually. So we will take that into account and try to find that the value of the R out. To find the R out, we will drive the test voltage and test current IT and IVT. So we will find the ratio between them. So do not consider that the RD we will uh, make it discon make the RD is disconnected for our simple calculation. <coughs> so if you change the VT, then there is the connection, electrical connection there <coughs> through the RO. That will modulate the uh, the voltage on the source node. That will create the current variation through the between drain and source. Such current variation, let's say that is ID, then the 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 current through RO will be what the IT minus ID, right? So that will merge onto RS again. That will be IT. So we know the voltage drop over RS would be IT times RS. Now the voltage between gate and source of the M1 would be the ID over GM plus GMB because we have we have a if we consider the body fact the body is tied to ground the same as the the gate to ground here because in that case, the change in source node voltage will change the VTH. That factor can be modeled onto backgate trans uh, conductance GMB. So we can find that gate gate so gate to source uh, voltage variation would be ID over GM plus GMB. Now. So for this calculation, we assume that the V in is tied to AC ground, like that. So from that, we can find some several equation to find the VT. First is VT will go through uh, this net loop. So we'll use the K KC KVL, right? So use KVL. So VT equal to Voltage drop over RO that will be RO times the IT minus ID, right? And plus what we have a IT times RS voltage drop over RS. This is the one equation. Another equation is the, the, the loop around the uh, the input the input side here. That is what, so we know that this is the first equation. Second equation is that starting from the AC ground here, the voltage drop is the minus ID over, uh, let's say positive, ID GM plus GM bar, that is the voltage drop across the gate and source. And another voltage drop is IT times RS. That would be zero. So we can find that the ID, so from one and two, that the two lead us that ID equal to what? Minus IT GM plus GM bar times RS. So this equation will be plugged onto the equation one then what would get is that what 
so vt over it we have it terms here so this it terms here from here we have it terms here so ro1 plus gm plus gmb times rs plus rs Mm -hmm. So that would give us the uh, the approximately this factor is a lot greater than RS, so we can approximate that one to what this guy. So here, right? So this is the R out. As you can see that the by having source degeneration, the R out is boosted by this much, 1 plus GM plus GMB times RS, right? So typical RO is boosted. If the RO is infinity, we know that the R out is infinity, right? As you can see here, we can still drive that, that condition from this equation, okay? So the benefit of the another benefit of the source degeneration is that the the looking down onto the drain side the M1 the equivalent resistance is got boosted by that the GM RS right GM there's a factor that boosting factor one plus GM RS right. This example give us some intuition uh, when the voltage fluctuation on the drain, how much voltage variation on the source node will, sh will happen. To answer such question, we may transform our circuit in a simpler way to quickly grab the how the voltage on the source node will change it for the large variation on the drain side. If we split this, uh, we, we factor out the, the RO on the transistor to the, off, uh, the in parallel like this, we have RO in parallel with the transistor, then this transistor becomes ideal, uh, the transconductance, right? Like this, plus minus, and so the source, gate, and drain, right? So, so this, the, this drain on the register and transistor, this two node will be same potential driven by the external voltage derivation um, fluctuation. We can split that. And the, if we look down onto the ideal transistor, this is infinity impedance. So, uh, change in voltage in here will not make any change in this uh, transistor, so this will not affect the source node. But the, through this realistic resistance, our voltage change will affect on the on the source node. So, but looking up to the the source node of the M1, we'll, we know the equivalent the impedance is one over GM plus GMB. So we can form the the similar uh, the 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 equivalent model shown in here, so that the delta V in here will change the voltage in here through this parallel register network. So delta V R S can be approximated by voltage change on the drain times uh, overall uh, resistance. So R O this is the RS in parallel with the one over GM plus GM bar B here so the overall voltage drop is the just simple voltage divider formation RO and this uh, the RS parallel with the one over GM plus GM B like this the voltage change in the this node will, will get easily the delta VRS on that node. So by this voltage divide equation. 
So this is how you can expect for the drain voltage. The voltage variation will be attenuated through this network and then we will see very small variation on vol small voltage variation on the source node. So having uh, a uh, transistor in cathode in t on top of the register we are uh, kind of isolating between this node and that node through this uh, high output resistance and then transistor okay in that uh, by that we will see that the the current variation through this uh, the equivalent resistance will be smaller because the smaller voltage variation will reduce the voltage on that node but that will go through this RO so the overall current variation delta I through this network will be smaller and smaller right small meaning we are having our out is large right This is kind of an intuitive way of understanding why the Cascode device will boost, why Cascode device to boost the output impedance. Because having Cascode here isolate the RS uh, on the, between drain and source node, and that will protect this RS, protect this RS from the voltage variation on the drain side that give us a small variation on this branch small current variation on that branch right so that boost that increase the RL okay this is the how we understand the the cat code uh, intuitively in this slide we will try to understand the the concept of the of the big GM and the R out. This is very important to analyze the very complicated circuit in a simpler way. For example, for the any unknown black box circuit, if you change the input voltage, then you will expect the change in output voltage. Such kind of uh, the mechanism or action can be simplified by Norton equivalent similar like this. Look at Norton equivalent circuit. The, we have the output resistance and then on the output resistance there is a current flows through this R out in response to the input variation. So I out will be somehow the uh, v in small variation times some proportional factor that is a big GM transconductance. So the I out will change in response to the V in. So the final V out can be modeled that what V out will be modeled at minus let's say R out times I out. So I out that is minus gm times r out times v in so we can find the voltage gain easily now the question is the how we find the big gm and big r out so one way for simple way to find the big gm is to find the i out in response to v in by having sh output shorted to ground so shorted to the shorted to the ground and find the I out how much current flowed through through that that will give us the the big GM because the ones we know the I out the then big GM will be what I out over uh, V in so this is how we get the big GM for the R out calculation in that case the input is just tied to ground so AC ground so that means the current will be J zero right current will be zero right so this becomes open circuit so what we have remaining is the R out only so in that case we can find the test voltage and test current 
and see that the relationship between that that will give us the R out, right? So we T over I T. Okay. Once we figure out the big GM and R out, the overall gain will be V in uh, the GM AV AV will be what? So GM minus GM times the R out, right? That is by the V out over V in. So this is very handy and simple for the complicated circuit, we will see how we can apply this technique to the uh, the following example. Let's say we have a common uh, source with the degenerate degeneration, an amplifier shown here. This is a black box. Let's see, find the big gem first. How we find the big gem first? We tie that to ground and find the current. How much current will flow? So I out will be, um, so we know that the ID will flow through uh, for input variation. So that will give us the voltage drop over gate and source ID over GM. This ID will only go through the RS so that will be voltage drop to RS times ID. So the current will be what? So uh, the here. So ID is the I out. So, so such current will be what? So we have a KVL through the input network and also KVL on the output network. So ID for the input network will have uh, the V in V in equal to what I V in plus V in minus ID voltage drop and then minus uh, R RS times ID that give us a zero right starting from there so also another Okay, we all look the other way is no. So this will give us what ID. This is good enough. So ID becomes what? So V in over one plus uh, RS plus one over GM. So ID this becomes I out. So big GM this guy the big GM times V in. That give us I out. But finally big GM is 1 over RS plus 1 over GM. So once we find that BGM there, now let's find the R out. The R out go, go looking down onto the drain side is the uh, first we disconnect this shorted uh, short connection and then look down onto the drain the R out. That would be infinity because the just ideal assuming this M1 is ideal we'll see just drain so this is infinity so the finally the gain of the amplifier the R out is only affected by what RD on that one on the alpha side so uh, infinity looking down and looking up is RD so finally the R out overall R out is RD so every overall voltage gain will be minus GM uh, uh, so wait a second. So the the current. So so take that the current relationship. So um, that will be what ID. So we will make it more accurate. So ID going going out would be the minus uh, the I out. So we will see that. The big GM is like that, so minus I out here. So big GM would be the other direction, so that one. So if you just make it the different direction, like the, that one, the A plus one, like the current going out 
is referenced like that and AV will be just GM times the RL so it would be GM is minus so GM minus GM times RL so GM would be minus 1 over RS plus 1 over GM times RD so this is overall gain so the the GM big GM you take it uh, let's say going to, to make it this polarity more accurate so ID I out must be minus I out so this is the minus I out that one is minus I out and uh, what we have is the I out It'll, so, so this big GM would be still minus minus that guy so gm times r out will be minus something like that right so so we can find the definition of here we'll, we'll have a uh, like this right okay so having big gm um, and the R out make this uh, the finding gain much simpler okay